welcome to another Coffee with Kilroy. Thanks for stopping by and sharing some time with me and having a cup of coffee or a beverage of your choice. As I like to say, time for a book and a beverage. And today we're going to be paging through Beaches for the Brave, a solitaire war game from Mike Lambeau. Now, Mr. Lambeau is becoming very pro prolific in his designs. Uh, we have Beaches for the Brave. I've done uh, something on Battles of Normandy, Battles of Medieval Britain, Ghost of the Jungle, and oh, that's a little bit of a surprise there that's that's coming up, a little bit of a, of a little teaser there. Now, these games are solitaire war games or board game books uh, which are, you know, becoming much more uh, prevalent these days. Uh, a lot of different companies are doing these, and I might actually do a kind of a deep dive on on all these, or exploration on on all these, uh, and how they uh, treat the space or gaming space a little bit differently. Uh, Mike Lambeau, his treatment is, in my opinion. A little bit closer to a box war game and what we're used to. Um, a lot of these other ones are are ver you know vary from roll and write type games where you're rolling and then just marking stuff on a page to um, being more of a what I kind of call a static battle where you're you're rolling for the AI and it's marking off stuff off off of, of your side of the board or your troops that are on, on that side of the battle, and then you're doing stuff to mark off their stuff off the battle. And there's some variation be in between. Uh, Mr. Lambeau's designs, to me, are, you know, for the most part, are kind of like a hex encounter type game uh, without, the, without the counters. You still have the hexes, and you're marking on the pages as you go. Uh, this Beaches of the Brave... Um, is is a little bit different from his other designs uh, in that this uh, this is all beach landing, so he's got a, a consistent theme, and it's not just one set of beach landings. A, a lot of the the ones that he's focusing on in this book are dealing with the Normandy uh, World War II Normandy invasion uh, or D-Day, and it, it covers some of the different beaches in that regard, but also. Uh, picks up some of the ones in the Pacific. There's uh, Guala Canal and there's Tarawa. So there's a little bit of variety here, but they all have kind of a uh, same theme of, of going towards a beach. Uh, and when we get in this, you're probably gonna see, uh, well, the first thing I saw off the bat is this kind of reminded me a little bit of D-Day Dice, which uh, not all the D-Day Dice uh, scenarios were, um, were D-Day uh, or beaches, I should say. Some of those were, get into the hedgerows, but the beach scenarios in this book kind of reminded me of some of the, the, the kind of the linear path that you're trying to take to get from the beach into, uh, into uh, kind of a beach head or into a secured location along the beach or further uh, inland. Uh, it just kind of reminded me of that. Uh, so with that, let's, uh, let's get a little sip here. And let us ooh, move that out of the way here. Let's start looking into this book here. So it's Beaches for the Brave, a solitaire war game. And I want to start off uh, by saying um, thank you to uh, Mike Lambeau. He sent this to me uh, to take a look at. Uh, I've been covering, I bought a, a few of his games or a few of his books and was covering those and then reached out to him. And, and he's been kind enough to send me uh, uh as many books as I bought now, so we're we're about fifty fifty. But uh, so I've got this one, and I might have another one coming. Uh, I wonder which one that might be. But um, these are the books by uh, Mike Lambeau: Fields of Normandy, Battles of Normandy, Ghosts of the Jungle, Battles of Middle Evil Britain, and Beaches for the Brave. And I've uh, covered all these except for uh, I think the Fields of Normandy is the only one I haven't covered yet. There uh, out of that list. Uh, in the book, you're going to have an introduction. It's going to give you a background, how these books work uh, in general. Um, you're going to have an objective, and the objective in each of these books play a little bit different. Some of the books, you know, there's like a set objective, like marked in red, and that's what you're going for. Other books might have 
other types of object objective, and this one's all going to be based around beach landing, so the objectives in this book might be somewhat similar, but will be different probably from the other books. Here's your rules. You got the Allied Forces, the beaches, game phases, and within a solitaire game, uh, they typically tend to be somewhat procedural. You need to follow them in order and do them as they come up. Destroying enemy positions, Allied force, uh, Forces phase in detail, um, enemy fire phase, hardcore mode. So I guess there's a little bit of a way to ratchet this up on the difficulty level, which is always uh, a kind of a nice feature to solitaire games. Then you start seeing the different scenarios. You've got um, uh, Beach 1, Utah Beach, Beach 2, Utah Beach, Beach 3, Gold Beach, uh, Beach 4, Iwo Jima. I missed that one. This was Iwo Jima's in here as well. Uh, Juno Beach, Tarawa, Sword Beach, Omaha, Omaha, Point du Hoc, uh, uh, Gravutu Islet, uh, that's near, oh, that's near Guadalcanal, Tarawa, and I probably butchered that pronunciation as I'm apt to do. So you've got 12 different scenarios here, uh, with a variety of beaches, all, uh, World War II, which is interesting. Uh, here's your background, how to use the book. Uh, here, it suggests here, photocopy the maps, use cubes or miniatures, use some kind of uh, acetate or dry wipe markers, take a photo of the maps. I mean, giving you all kinds of different suggestions because I don't write in these books. I know they're kind of meant to write in. Uh, that's just a little hang up I have. Um, and uh, so I like just to keep things uh, pristine uh, as much as possible. So I usually make copies, but uh, I've have tried like using uh, some pieces I have from other games. Uh, it kind of, to me, it's kind of reminiscent of the old uh, cheap ass games. If, if any of you that were in the Euro game hobby, cheap ass games came out with games that used bits from all your other games. I mean, how many people have a, a set of Monopoly lying around? So you have the dice and have the money and have the the, the pawns, and so they made a whole line of games. They're relatively uh, unique games and one of the one of the ways I got back into the hobby so to speak after so many years was through those games I found them very interesting interesting designs but you use bits from other pieces so uh, you can use bits from your other games there, all of us probably have some uh, you know blank counters lying around that we can use or I've seen some people use like memoir 44 and use some of the train and stuff from there I mean you know, be creative. There's a lot of stuff you can do to uh, to use for this or just mark in the book you want because I'm sure Mr. Lambo would appreciate you marking the heck out of this and buying more copies, right? Um, here's your objectives. Uh, here's rules. Here's the beaches. And this game's a little bit different. There's a lot more iconography in this game. The other games were pretty much a typical hex encounter with some terrain. These have some different notations that are going to be on the board. And again, that kind of was, to me, somewhat reminiscent uh, of, you know, good old D-Day dice, which, you know, had uh, a lot of stuff marked on a board. And then you're, you're rolling dice to, you know, advance your troops up this beach. And Again, I don't think this plays the same way. I, I haven't got into this yet, but um, uh, I'm cracking this open with you guys right now. Um, but uh, that just it just looked kind of similar. And maybe it's just because of the nature of the beast of a linear approach. Maybe that's uh, why they look somewhat similar in that regard. Um, game phase overview, destroying any positions, allied forces detail. And we got, we got some little color there here, so... Allied movement, allied naval file support, fire support, grenade attacks, suppress fire, reinforcement. So this has a little bit more, uh, uh, just off the, uh, I have to go back and look at the other books, but it looks like there's a little bit more to this as far as, you know, combat segments, at least. Uh, just a quick reading of this right here. Here's an example of play or example of the phases. Here's an example of the board and how you, you move up the board. As you can see here, it's going to be kind of a linear approach on how you want to get up. And I imagine you got to take out these, these pill boxes up here or these uh, fortified positions. You know, again, I hate to keep saying it, but it does r remind me of uh, D-Day Dice a little bit. Uh, enemy fire phase, hardcore mode, and then setup. Um, not very much setup here, right? You got the 12 beaches, you place there, you grab your dice, then it's, then that's it, ready to go. So not, not a lot of setup. And then as with all these books, 
you kind of have the rules or the charts or the AI on this side of the page, and then you have your plain surface or your board or page on this side, and this is where you're gonna mark or keep track of what you're doing, and this is how you do it, uh, either through uh, the, the sequence of play or, you know, uh, sometimes there's charts on here. It looks like this is more of a, um, of a straight phase uh, type issue where you're gonna be doing something, then they're gonna be doing something, and then you just rinse and repeat. Uh, so I don't see a lot of charts on this uh, from like the, the, the previous games, but it could be wrong on that. So you've got all the different beaches here um, that you just go through here, and, and so each one is a little bit different. As you can see, there's some different terrain and different obstacles that you're gonna go on. I imagine some of the, the, the phases might be different as well over here. And uh, so as you can see here, you're getting a little bit of, uh, here's Tarawa, you're getting a little bit of variety here, um, which, you know, I just think this is, uh, what a, what a novel way to approach this. Uh, again, this isn't, you know, if, if you're a hardcore, um, or even a, you know, um, you know, a traditional war gamer, you don't have to be hardcore grognard, but a traditional war gamer, this might be a little too light for you or a little bit too, uh, maybe too puzzly and not enough of you want to you want a simulation or or some more realism whatever that means in a wargaming space and I can understand that for me I, I like these these are very portable I can take these wherever uh, plop down go through them I mean I, I have to bring my extra copies because I print out stuff but you can take these just about anywhere um, and uh, you know go through it. Uh, it doesn't look ex especially complicated to go through the sequence and make, make your decisions and go through here. And you're making some decisions. You're deciding how to do things, and, and then you're going to have to react to what they do. So, again, I mean, it's 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 all what your, what your expectations are. And if you're not expecting a whole lot of simulation, then this is, you know, might might fit your, uh, or scratch your itch, maybe. Maybe that's another way to say it. Uh, here's Point du Hoc. A little bit different here. I guess this might be like the cliffs here. This line right here, maybe. Um, here's part of Guadalcanal. It's kind of an interesting spot right there. So as you can see here, you get a lot of variety here. Uh, and these look a little different. This isn't Hex Encounter. This is more of a chart going up the up the line here, or, or a track, so to speak, as opposed to, you know, a grid. Uh, uh, or hex and uh, 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 or a hex uh, grid where you're going to be able to make more maneuvers. So there, there might be this might be a little bit more linear. This might be a little bit more, you know, set on how you're doing certain things uh, from from the other ones that I've seen so far from him. So you know that might be a little bit different. But I mean, heck, variety is the spice of life, right? So um, that is beaches of uh, beaches for the brave is a dice placement solitaire war game which loosely represents the beach landings by the Allied forces during the World War II. Each landing is designed to be small scale and represent perhaps one or two boats landing on a specific beaches. The various landings represent uh, represented try to reflect some of the actual situations and events as they happen, but this is meant to be an accessible game which is quick and easy to play and so not a complex simulation. Players will still be challenged by the conditions and the enemy, so expect a tough time out there. Plus, you can ratchet it up because uh, he's got a hardcore, hardcore mode there. So that's Beaches of the Brave. Um, sorry about that. The uh, uh, I have been enjoying uh, going through these. I've I've played. Uh, I think I've played everything I've got so far. Well, except for maybe one that might have just came in with uh, with this one. So let me have a little sip here. You can all uh, have a sip. You know, we can we can have a sip together. Um, but I'm enjoying these. I mean, they all uh, do things a little bit different. Um, they are, you know, and cover different topics, and. Uh, and and have some similarities and some things that are a little bit different. Uh, so I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking this uh, space. I'm, and, you know, I've, I've covered other ones too from the other different, um, you know, publishers or designers out there. I enjoy those as well. Uh, to me, these are, uh, they don't cost as much, but yet you're, there's still quite a lot of gameplay in here and uh, uh, kind of a different approach from the other ones. So, you know, they, they, these hold up 
on their own uh, account. And so, uh, you know, if, if any of these interest you or what I've talked about these, you know, really, uh, you know, try try them out. Um, these aren't that uh, that hard to, uh, or, or expensive to pick up. Um, and uh, see what you think about them. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Let's, uh, man, I'm gonna have me have me some more coffee. Um, love to know your thoughts on on these or any of the other ones, but but especially these since I, this is you know covering covering uh, Mr. Lambeau's designs on on this piece. So love to know your thoughts, good, bad, or ugly. Um, and uh, you know, you know, appreciate any of it. And most, most importantly, I appreciate you spending some time with me. I know it's precious. So anytime you spend with me is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And you know what? Enjoy the rest of your coffee, beverage, or whatever you're drinking and the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>